It's a normal day in the city when a group of friends is getting ready to go on an all-boys weekend. Vince barely manages to make it out of bed because he's still heartbroken over his recent divorce. Neil is leaving behind a two-night stand while the girl yells at him for treating her like a working lady. Graham has an argument with his boyfriend too, explaining girls aren't allowed. Mikey also has trouble at home, since his wife knows the boys' meetings often involve courtesans. To stop his wife from wanting to divorce him, he's glued the ring to her finger while she slept. Patrick prefers to listen to his stress therapy recordings rather than hear his wife scold him because this weekend they were supposed to have dinner with her parents. Finally there's Matt, who owns a comic shop and gets in arguments with little kids over fictional characters. Today he was so rude to the poor child that the shop's window gets vandalized. The guys meet at a bar where they discuss their plans for the incoming weekend, like playing golf, although Vince continues to be quiet and sad, especially when he finds a picture of his ex-wife in his wallet. Meanwhile Banksy is late because he's realized he forgot his phone in the house and to make matters worse, he left the keys inside too, locking himself out. His friends try to call him, but since he won't answer, they think he's being lazy. Shortly afterward, the minibus they hired arrives and they discover the driver is a woman. Neil immediately nicknames her Candy, earning her scorn. Tired of waiting, the group decides to leave with Banksy, who is now in the middle of the road because his van broke down and even a traffic enforcer makes fun of his vehicle for it. During the trip, Candy tries to cheer Moodley up by pointing out there are worse things than divorce, like murder, and surprisingly it does make Vince feel better. She's also curious to know why they chose Moodley as a destination since it's a small dead end in the middle of the woods, Vince explains they'll stay in Mikey's nan's house while she's away. Neil excitedly adds that women outnumber men 4 to 1 in that village. A few hours later, the minibus suddenly stops because the road is blocked by rotten and gutted animals. At first the boys are too disgusted to act, but when Candy begins working alone without caring about the icky factor, Vince helps. Meanwhile Mikey shares that his nan is on a cruise while builders fix her house, and the group realizes the old lady doesn't know they're coming. At that moment, Vince gets a call from his ex-wife reminding him he has to sign the papers, and Mikey gets one from his wife threatening his PlayStation. Neil gets tired of all this whining and commands everyone to put their phones away in a bag so they can focus on relaxing. Sometime later, they arrive at Moodley, and while the boys get off the minibus, Candy puts drops on her eyes because they've reddened. It's right before sunset yet somehow the village seems empty. The group begins around and when they see a football they kick it for the laugh without realizing there's a dash of blood in it. Not finding anyone around, Graham decides that Mikey will break into his nan's house to prepare the house for their stay while their boys go get a drink. On their way to the pub, Matt splits from the group, getting curious about a shop called Burning Witch, which has all kinds of gross stuff on display. He also notices the only campaign posters belong to the same female politician that is being sponsored by a brand of wash powder, and the others were torn off. Meanwhile Mikey looks under all the gander gnomes in his nan's garden for a set of spare keys, not noticing the severed hand on the lawnmower. Once he finds the keys, he finally notices a bloody handprint on the fence. Curious, he looks behind the fence and is shocked to see a bride zombie eating an interesting. When she sees him, she grabs an axe and begins chasing him. At the pub, Neil relieves himself in the bathroom and watches the woman in the next stall dropping much more blood than her monthly should release. Then he rejoins the group and notices the stench smell wafting in the air. The group chats without knowing there's a rotting corpse behind the counter. Since nobody will serve them, the group goes back to find Matt and they watch how a hooded beggar appears down the road. They wonder if they should toss her some coins, but suddenly Sergeant Gavin jumps on the beggar and tries to kill her with his knife. The guys rush to help the woman and Vince tackles Gavin to punch him, but Gavin easily flips him over. Neil also joins the fight and hits the soldier on the chest, only for Gavin to throw him off. Then the beggar steals the knife and stabs Neil's hands. Gavin tries to explain what's going on, but Vince knocks him out. At that moment Mikey shows up and smashes the beggar's head with a garden gnome, revealing she's actually a horrifying zombie. Then Mikey explains that the village is a small zombie apocalypse and points to the street, where infected women are approaching them. The group rushes back to the minibus carrying an unconscious Gavin, only to discover Candy is now infected too. Neil immediately closes the minibus doors and the guys decide to run to Nan's house. On the way, they're disgusted to see a gutted soldier pinned on the fence. Neil approaches him to retrieve the gun, but at that moment the soldier wakes up and tells him the gun is empty. He also warns them not to go to the woods and laughs when Vince asks him what's in there. Suddenly the zombie bride appears behind the soldier and splits his head in two. Screaming in fear, the group runs away and makes it to Nana's house, where Mikey has trouble finding the keys in a zillion pockets. His friends grab the paint buckets left by the builders and begin throwing them at the zombies while an infected hairdresser gets close enough to attack Matt. Luckily Vince manages to stop her by stunning her with black paint. Then Mickett finally finds the keys and the group rushes into the house, causing the horde to retreat. Vince is furious because their weekend has been ruined and Neil tries to call for help, but his phone has no signal. Patrick gives Neil a damp towel for his wound, noticing he isn't turning. All the zombies they've seen are women, so instead of the usual biting, Vince thinks something in the air is only affecting female bodies. At that moment Neil looks out the window and is surprised to see a bunch of crows crowing. 
The sudden scream wakes Gavin up, and he explains all men from the village are dead. Matt guesses it must be a biological weapon that went out of control, but Gavin just answers it's classified. Tension grows as the group demands more information, but then Patrick announces the kettle's boiling and everyone seats down for tea like the English boys they are. It's revealed that nobody has survived long enough in the village to search for a cure and that a majority of the horde searches for fresh meat in the woods. Desperate to escape, the guys agree they need to retrieve the minibus. Since Neil always says women love him, they send him to lure Candy out. Using the smell of his wound, Neil manages to make Candy leave the minibus, and the rest of the group rushes into the vehicle. Unfortunately as soon as they turn on the engine, two zombies pop up from behind the back seats. The guys begin running again and Patrick tries to grab the bag with the phones, but a zombie grabs the other end and they struggle until the strap breaks. Then the other zombie attacks him with her axe, but Patrick dodges it and begins running toward a billboard. The zombie catches up to him and wounds his leg with the axe, but Patrick keeps going and climbs the billboard where they can't reach him. When he checks the bag, he's disappointed to find the golf balls instead of the phones. The rest of the group is surrounded by zombies in the street with no way to escape, but at that moment Patrick starts hitting golf balls like a baseball and hitting the zombies to provide a distraction. Vince and Matt hide in a toy shop while Gavin, Graham, and Mikey enter an apparel shop. Neil grabs the scattered balls to throw them at the zombies again then hides inside a house next to the church, but suddenly, someone knocks him out. At the toy store, Vince realizes they forgot to lock the door and has to fight off a zombie that almost crashes inside. Matt is excited about all the collector editions but mainly because he's found lots of nitro fluid, usually used for radio-controlled cars. He pours some of this fluid on the zombie's hand and lights it up using Vince's lighter. At the apparel shop, Graham watches the zombie burn, but Gavin pulls him away from the window, pointing out they need to lay low. They explore the place, finding the floor covered in blood and a decapitated head on a shelf. In the fitting room, there's an infected saleslady that immediately sees them, so Gavin uses his last bullet on her. Unfortunately the sound of the gunshot gets the attention of the zombies outside. Meanwhile Matt finds some toy walkie-talkies, so the straps one to a remote control car and sends it out the street, making sure to drive it around the zombies' feet until it makes it to the apparel shop. Mikey successfully receives the walkie-talkie and the two groups can finally communicate, making them realize Neil isn't with either of them. It turns out Neil has been captured by a zombie, who has tied him to a chair to have him as her dinner guest. The cake is decorated with human fingers and she doesn't hesitate to eat them in from of him. Since Neil refuses to play along, the zombie reaches for him and gets his finger with an electric knife. Then she eats it with some cream. At the billboard stand, Patrick stays calm, thanks to his meditation recordings while the zombie uses her axe to chop the billboard stand. The groups at the store make a plan together through the walkie-talkies. Mikey places the severed head on the car then Gavin dances at the window to distract the horde. The door opens and the car comes out, so Vince controls it to lead the horde out of the area. Next, Mikey exits the shop to search for a useful car and finds a military truck, meaning its glass window isn't breakable no matter what he tries. While hitting the car with frustration, he accidentally triggers the car's alarm, which attracts the horde back. Mikey has no choice but to hide in the nearest building, which turns out to be a slaughterhouse. He moves deeper inside while doing his best to ignore all the bloody parts everywhere around the room, only to find a zombie butcher slicing human limbs. The zombie immediately attacks, throwing Mikey through the window. The rest of the group is worried that Mikey hasn't returned, so Matt and Vince decide to go looking for him. First though, Matt builds a flamethrower with the fluid and some toys, he also gives Vince a smaller toy gun because they're stealing jokes from better movies. By the time they come out, they're shocked to find the street empty, but a zombie takes the chance to surprise them from behind. Matt immediately burns her with the flamethrower, making her run away. The toy catches on fire too and Matt throws it on the ground, only to discover they've been leaking fluid all over the place and flame is catching on. Following the fluid trail, the flame reaches the toy store and makes it explode. Back to Mikey, he lands on the street and manages to outrun the horde to make it back to the apparel shop while Vince and Matt run to the church. Among all the body parts, the duo discovers this place used to be a military base, so they use the walkie-talkie to tell their friends to join them there. Then the duo explores the building and finds an old laboratory where obviously horrifying experiments have been conducted. The guys at the apparel store decide to dress up as women, which allows them to leave the shop safely because the zombies only attack men. Meanwhile the zombie finishes chopping off the billboard stand and makes Patrick fall. As the zombie chases him, Patrick immediately runs to the minibus and finds Candy holding his golf club. He takes it from her, quickly closes the doors, and uses the club to beat up the zombie coming after him. Back to the trio in costume, they're dealing with a zombie that is getting too suspicious and punches them, but they retaliate by snapping her head. At that moment Patrick finds them and together they leave for the church. Meanwhile Neil taunts the zombie into coming closes and the electric knife cuts the rope, then he takes the knife to attack the zombie and runs away. At the door he notices the horde coming after him, so he climbs to the roof through the window instead. From there he notices the group at the church door, but when he tries to wave, he leans against the roof and it breaks, causing him to fall into a room filled with infected exotic dancers having a meal. 
The dancers try to eat him at the same time and start fighting each other over who gets him, allowing Neil to escape and rejoin his friends. The group takes shelter inside the church right before the horde reaches them. Matt activates the computers and the screens reveal the whole village is under surveillance. The politician from the poster shows up demanding an update, but as soon as she sees strange faces she hangs up. Suddenly an alarm on Gavin's watch announces phase 2 has begun. Outside, the infected women evolve and become smarter, faster, and weirder, while Gavin explains phase I as sickness, disorientation, and psychosis. The zombie with the axe begins chopping at the door and Gavin reveals he's found a gadget that controls the experiment. With it, he can emit high-frequency sonic deterrents that produce a painful sound inclusive for women and is only effective after phase 2 mutation. However, when he presses the button, nothing happens. Gavin starts panicking thinking they have no hope, and Neil scolds him because this is the fault of the very same experiment he was executing for some dumb politician. At that moment Matt finds a box full of wash powder, and it's revealed that the politician was a delivery girl that distributed free wash powder containing the virus to each household. Out of a sudden, Gavin spits blood and dies, revealing Mikey's infected Nan behind him. Mikey is upset, but he still has to watch how Matt surprises Nan from behind and beats her up with a golf club. Traumatized by what he had to do, Matt goes to the lab for some alone time, and Vince goes after him to comfort him. However Vince finds Matt being killed by the burned zombie. Vince goes to give the news to the group, causing a furious Mikey to attack the zombie for revenge. Meanwhile Banksy finally arrives at Moodley 2 yet doesn't notice the zombie inside the minibus. Back to the group, they fight the zombie together and while the others hold her down, Mikey kills her with her own weapon. Then they notice the horde has blocked the main door, so they escape through the stairs, finding a corridor with a terrifying sight at the end. All the dead men have been piled up to make a nest for the zombies. A creature sees them and they run away again, going into a room to escape through the window and reach the roof. At that moment, Banksy sees them and brings a ladder left by the builders, but the idiot starts climbing to join his friends. He doesn't believe the story when they scold him, but he helps when they move the ladder and use it to reach the neighboring roof. Everyone crosses safely while being terrified of the zombies waiting for them on the ground, but Graham is delayed because he stayed back to block the door. Some zombies manage to push him and break in, so Graham rushes to cross over as well, but a zombie catches up and moves the ladder to make him fall. Graham hit the ground and the horde immediately jumps on him to feed. The friends run around the roof and climb down, where they discover Banksy drove here in a tiny rental car. The tension finally breaks and the group begins arguing over who is to blame, but Patrick interrupts them to confess he wants to live longer. His speech is interrupted by another zombie, who immediately kills him. The remaining boys run back to the minibus and when they open the doors, Candy tries to attack, only to hesitate when she sees Vince's face. Vince uses the distraction to punch her and while he and Neil hold her down, another zombie approaches Banksy and kills him with a broken bottle. Vince runs to check on him and Neil finally loses it, knocking out Candy with a punch before yelling at the horde for more. His friends drag him into the bus, but before they take off, Vince burns the picture of his ex-wife, announcing he's done with women and if they want a pet they can get a Labrador. Not depressed anymore, Vince drives the minibus and hits as many zombies as he can on his way out of town. However when they reach the road, they suddenly hear Graham through the walkie-talking. It turns out he's been thrown in the nest with the other bodies and he wants to be rescued. The trio immediately makes their way back and gets ready to fight with gold clubs. Meanwhile Graham finds the remote control for the system and goes upstairs, where he notices a wire had been disconnected. Graham quickly fixes everything and presses a button that activates the speakers the military installed all over town, which immediately makes the zombies freeze. Then Graham rejoins his friends and Neil grabs the control to have some fun. He presses the button over and over to taunt the zombies, getting close because they can't touch him. Then he tosses the control back to his friends, only for it to fall and break. The system fails and the zombies are freed, so the friends immediately throw Graham in a shopping cart and begin running away. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.